With the recent move in the crypto market, there's no better time to reflect back on the decisions we've made and more importantly, figure out what our plan is moving forward. For more than 60% of you, you've just recently gotten involved with the cryptocurrency world within the past year or so, and that is a lot to take on, especially as you start seeing big moves in the market. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do next. How do we take advantage of this time to start building an organized portfolio so that as the market recovers, we're positioned well, taking advantage of the lower prices. I wanna talk about why now is a great time to start thinking about setting up a portfolio, what a crypto portfolio is, how do these work. We're going to talk about crypto sectors, dollar cost averaging, automating our investments. We're going to cover it all so that by the end of this video, you'll have a great idea about, hey, what are some next steps that I need to take in order to build a crypto portfolio that I can use moving forward? And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you the portfolio I set up for 2022. So if you're ready to recover, move forward, make a plan, and start feeling confident in the crypto markets again. Grab your favorite coffee and something to take notes with, and let's dive into it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Brian Logan. I am so thankful that you are here. Before we dive in, a few things. First, there's a lot of content in this video, so I've included some timestamps down below. I also have a blog, brianlogan.com, where I'll try to post the transcript of this video. And I've also got a Discord channel, the link below, where you can come and chat directly with me as well as the community to ask questions and get involved in this crypto space. Secondly, I'm not a financial advisor. We're gonna be going through some portfolios today and just know these are all my opinions and for entertainment purposes only. Be sure to understand the risks before getting involved in the crypto space. And next, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be showing you a lot of things. So I've included links below all the different tools and softwares that I'm gonna be using. And lastly, guys, I'm super excited. This is the first video I'm launching a Patreon type-like experience called buy me a coffee. I've really enjoyed the conversations with you all and I'm looking forward to the future of adding a couple membership tiers to share all of my tools and keep you up to date on all my recent trades and all that. But for now, if you really enjoy this content and want to support me and the channel, feel free to buy me a coffee below. I really appreciate it. With that, let's talk about building portfolios. So let's start with why we need a portfolio. So portfolios are simply there to help us organize our investments so that we can balance both risk and reward as we set goals for building our wealth. Portfolios are also awesome in that they give you the ability to see the full picture of all your finances. You could have crypto portfolios, stock portfolios, and overall zoomed out portfolio, kind of nested portfolios. You can tell I geek out on this stuff, but having all that organization is actually so critically important. When you're organized, you feel more confident in your investments, and when you know that you have a plan, it frees up time to focus on things that you really enjoy. All right, so let's get into it. So a lot of people just jump to portfolios about, hey, I've got 50% Bitcoin and 30% Ethereum, but that's not the right place to start. The right place to start in order to have a portfolio that succeeds is making a plan first, thinking about some guiding principles for what you want as the goals for your your portfolio. And before we go into the specifics, remember this is all about creating a plan. And as my dad always says, you want to make a plan, stick to the plan, but stay flexible. So as I think about guiding principles for my crypto portfolio, I like to think about three main things. The first thing I want to focus on in this portfolio is getting exposure to a lot of the different sectors in the crypto space to help reduce my risk through diversification as well as take advantage of growth opportunities without feeling like I need to research every single coin and try to find the next one that's gonna jump off the page. My second guiding principle is also about risk, and it's about managing risk through being involved with liquid markets or coins with the medium high to high market caps, because these are the coins that are easily traded back and forth and don't have a lot of slippage and are typically supported by a lot of users. And the third guiding principle for me is taking advantage of leveraging the ability to stake and lend the coins that I own to help grow my holdings through compounding interest and also reduce some of the risk due to the price volatility of the underlying coin. So all this means is much like collecting a dividend for a stock, I wanna collect interest on the coins that I hold via staking or lending. And I've actually got a video on staking that I'll link above that you should check out if you haven't already. And I've got one more bonus guiding principle for this portfolio, and that is simply that I wanna focus on reducing fees and transaction costs throughout this entire investment strategy. So those are some of my guiding principles that I like to think about before setting on my portfolio. For you, they might look similar or maybe they look completely different. 
The next thing that's super important to think about before actually figuring out what coins you want is determining your level of involvement in your portfolio strategy. So I have four things around level of involvement for me with this portfolio. The first one is that I wanna spend some time on that initial setup. And you're gonna see that as we kind of go through. I wanna make sure that I understand what crypto sectors are, what crypto sectors I wanna be a part of, and figure out what coins are best to kind of start out with. The second thing is I think about my strategy and level of involvement is I wanna deploy automated dollar cost averaging into this portfolio. So what dollar cost averaging simply means is I wanna continuously buy these coins over time at a certain set interval. I'm not gonna to worry too much about exactly what price it is, if it's going up or if it's going down. I just wanna consistently buy over time and I want that to be automated because I don't wanna to have to go in every week or every day and place trades. So that's my second thing, strong initial setup, but then automate a dollar cost averaging strategy so that I can kind of set it and forget it. Now the third thing actually goes against the second one a little bit. I really love technical analysis and I wanna be able to supplement that dollar cost averaging when I feel necessary. Maybe something on the technical chart or something that I'm looking at says I should be buying more of a certain coin. So I plan to supplement my dollar cost averaging that's automated with my own trades based off of technical analysis that I really enjoy. And lastly, for this portfolio, I'll plan to rebalance as far as taking profits, moving coins around, at first at a monthly level, and then we'll see where we go from there. So as with everything that's worth having, this takes time. But I guarantee if you take the time to think about these guiding principles and how you wanna think about the strategy and level of involvement with this portfolio, it becomes so much easier to set it up and create a plan that's sustainable and something that's easy to adjust and make changes as time goes on. Now that you've taken the time to do this, it's the perfect time to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And again, if you wanna buy me a coffee down below, I'd really appreciate it to help support the channel. All right, now for real, now that you've taken the time to, to plan out your guiding principles in your portfolio, the next step is something you don't have to do, but I think is super value in the crypto space. And that's creating your money flow diagram. And the reason this is so critical in the crypto space is as you've probably experienced, there's so many different exchanges, there's different functionality at different exchanges, there's different fees for moving fiat currency around, buying cryptocurrencies, moving cryptocurrencies around. I think it's critically important to understand how your money is going to flow through this process in order to get the coins and achieve the guiding principles and a level of involvement that you plan for this portfolio. So I'm gonna geek out over this. I love visualizations. I'm gonna show you a high level version of what I have set up for this portfolio. And if you wanna dive in more to what I've set up or talk through your own plan and strategize about what's the best accounts and what's the best exchanges to use, feel free to join my Discord channel and I'd love to chat. All right, for my money flow diagram for this portfolio, I've got three major providers. The first one is Fidelity. And the reason I'm using Fidelity is because they're the one of the few places that offer free wire transfers from Fidelity to somewhere else. So I can transfer my fiat currency from Fidelity to my next provider for free. And that next provider is Kraken Exchange. Now at this step, you need an exchange that accepts fiat currency and can turn it into cryptocurrency. Not all exchanges do that. Kraken is one that does it, Coinbase is another, Binance is another. The reason that I chose Kraken is for a couple reasons. One, I really like the company, they're very secure, I really like the things that they stand behind. Secondly, they allow you to transfer USDT, which is Tether, via the TRC20 token, which I'm not gonna get it too much into this, but that allows you to transfer those tokens not over the expensive Ethereum network, but over a separate network that is a whole lot cheaper. So I really like that they offer that functionality. That's something that Coinbase doesn't offer. So for me, that was a deal breaker with Coinbase for this portfolio, was that I needed to move that USDT tether around and we'll get into more of that in a minute, but I wanted to do so in the cheapest way possible. So Kraken met that for me. Kraken also has a lot of great staking capabilities, which again, I talk about in my staking video above. Binance could be a good option, but for me, Kraken made more sense. So the last provider is KuCoin. So this is another cryptocurrency exchange that has a tremendous amount of functionality. One of those functionalities is a free included unrestricted dollar cost averaging bot. So this allows me to perform the dollar cost averaging that I want for this portfolio without having to purchase a separate bot for dollar cost averaging and link it to an exchange. It's all included in one. They also offer awesome rates for just holding the stablecoin USDT again. That's the stablecoin I'm using to move my money around. So I can hold my money, make a great return, and then also leverage the dollar cost averaging bot to accomplish what I want for this portfolio. Now the downside for KuCoin is they don't allow you to transfer that fiat currency or your US dollar directly into the account. You have to come in using another cryptocurrency unless you wanna pay the fees to use a credit or debit card, 
which I do not. Remember one of my guiding principles is to keep fees and transaction costs as low as possible. All right, and then the last quick thing with the money flow is the way to withdraw the funds. So you can see my arrows going back from KuCoin to Kraken to Fidelity to go from coins all the way back to my fiat. So with these three providers and this high level roadmap, I can understand how my money's flowing, where it's flowing to, how much my fees are. It gives me a great picture to understand what's happening to my money. All right, that's a lot of setup, but I promise it's worth it. And it's something that so many people skip over that makes it harder to be successful. So now how do we think about what coins to put in this portfolio? Ultimately, it comes down to organization. And there's a great organizational tool and that is crypto sectors. So similarly, how the stock market has different sectors for healthcare and technology, industrials, the crypto markets also have sectors. And this again was one of my guiding principles. So what are the crypto sectors? So there's a lot of great resources on YouTube as well as a great site called coingecko.com that I'll link below that actually allows you to look through all the different sectors that they have and start thinking about which sub sectors you wanna be involved in. Through my research, I've narrowed it down to a couple that I'm gonna focus on. The first one is median to exchange. And for me, this is, this is really Bitcoin. There's others like Litecoin and others out there, but this is really Bitcoin. So the second sector is smart contract platforms. This is where Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot live. And the cool thing about this sector is this is almost like investing in the indices in the stock market. There are so many other applications, DeFi and whatnot built on the foundation of Ethereum and Cardano and things that by having these smart contract platforms in your portfolio is really a way to almost invest in an index or all of these different coins and projects that are a part of this platform. So super cool and definitely gonna be a good chunk of my portfolio that we'll get into in a minute. The next massive sector is DeFi, so decentralized finance. And there's a ton of subcategories in this. You've got lending with like Aave and Compound, You've also got oracles, which are just projects and blockchains that help smart contracts function by providing the data required in that smart contract. One of the main coins being Chainlink in, in this sector. You've also got like an NFT gaming sector. So you've got like Axe Infinity and Sand in here. So this is where the, the game landscape is and NFTs as well. Another sector is the internet of things or the supply chain. So these are gonna be different projects that help with the the interconnectivity of different systems and softwares all together. And then you've got some miscellaneous sectors like music and web 3.0 and a whole bunch of others. But be sure to check out coingecko.com down below because it, it breaks down these different sectors and shows you by market capitalization. So what are like the largest sectors and the largest coins in those sectors? Now you may have heard of some of the coins that we mentioned, maybe you own some already, or maybe this is all new to you. Regardless of where you are, the important thing to know is that there's an organization of cryptocurrencies out there and an ability for you to research and figure out which ones make the most sense so that you can add them to your portfolio and make sure that you're diversifying across a broad spectrum of different offerings by these different coins. All right, so what's the next step? We've got our guiding principles, we know our level of involvement, we've got our money flow, and we now have a good understanding of all the different sectors that exist and what sectors we wanna be a part of. Now it's allocation into those sectors, and this is the percentage part. This is where most videos begin, but we've taken all of this time to get to this setup point, again, because it's so critically important and will lay that foundation to have a successful portfolio, not only in the crypto space, but for your stock portfolio and your bond portfolio and really your overall financial picture portfolio. So I hope it's really helped. And if you've had any questions so far, feel free to comment down below or again, join that Discord channel. And I'd love to talk to you about any of this in more detail. All right, now on to the real numbers of the allocation for this portfolio. So the first one I wanna start with is Bitcoin. So again, this is the medium of exchange sector. And ultimately, Bitcoin is almost synonymous with cryptocurrency. There's a lot of people who say Bitcoin, but actually mean cryptocurrency. And Bitcoin has had so much adoption that you can't not have it as part of your portfolio and have it as a pretty good chunk. So I'm gonna be starting with 25% of this portfolio in Bitcoin. The next area is the smart contract platforms. If you couldn't tell already, I'm really excited about this, especially as work as almost indices for all of those other projects that are built on top of them. So I'm gonna dedicate 35% of the portfolio to these smart contract platforms. Next big group is DeFi. So I'm gonna put about 25% in DeFi. And again, there's so many subcategories in there with 
lending and oracles and NFTs and gaming, all of that being grouped into that DeFi category of 25%. Next is the 10% bucket for miscellaneous. So this is, I'm a little bit interested in about music and how this and how cryptocurrency plays into the audio space. And there's also some other areas that I'd like to continue to explore. So I wanna be able to have a portion of this portfolio as kind of a play area to get involved and do re more research on different sectors and topics. So I'm gonna dedicate 10% to that. And that last 5% is gonna be stable coins. So again, that USDT is that tether where I can get a really good rate in KuCoin for it just sitting there as a stable coin. Now I wanna reiterate, this is where we're gonna start. Remember, make a plan, stick to the plan, but stay flexible. And that's what we plan to do with this. I think a lot of people get scared about when I get too structured and I can't change anything. And that's just not the case. You have to remember, you just wanna lay yourself a good foundation. You can do this. It's not that hard. Just get started, get something set up. And then it's always easy to adjust if you've gone through all of these steps, especially understanding your money roadmap. All right, with that, the last part now that we have the allocation by sector is actually allocating to the specific coins within those sectors. So I'm gonna show you some of the coins that I'm thinking about for these different sectors. It's a lot of the ones that I had mentioned previously. And again, all of these can change over time. I might swap out some here or there, but ultimately these are the ones I'm thinking about for these different sectors moving forward and the percentages that I would tie to each one. And the other thing to keep in mind as I chose these different coins was keeping in mind one of those guiding principles about leveraging the ability to stake and lend these different coins. I wanted to make sure to be able to take advantage of compound interest in addition to just the overall value of the coin. So all of these coins tended to have a pretty good ability to either stake or lend at a reasonable rate. And I'll show you some of those rates on the screen now, but again, those are likely to change and be somewhat variable. If you wanna follow along with this portfolio this year and see how it goes and see what adjustments are made, I'd really appreciate it if you'd supported the channel by buying a coffee below and then jumping over to my Discord channel so that as I get this portfolio set up and established, you'll be able to see any changes I make and see the update progress of the portfolio as we go. And with that, thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you see the whole picture of portfolios, of building and understanding where portfolios come from, why they're helpful, and how you can take the steps to build a great foundation in order to create a portfolio that will be flexible enough for you, but also provide you a good balance of both risk and reward. And if it did, if it was helpful, feel free to give a thumbs up to this video and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again so much for watching. I'm Brian Logan. Remember to stay healthy, love your family, and elevate your wealth.